All right, guys. If you thought that uh, the polyatomic ions were kind of blowing your mind a little bit, wait till you see oxidation numbers. Now, I just want to caution you. Oxidation numbers is one of these things that is simple, has rules laid out. And so every time you're working on one of these, until you get used to them, have the rules in front of you. Okay? Um, you you just got to have them in front of you. There's no way you're going to understand it otherwise. When you ask me for help on them, you have to have the, the rules in front of you. Um, so first off, real quick, let's talk about what oxidation numbers are. Um, oxidation numbers are very similar to charge. Okay, they are not quite the same thing. Basically, what they are, and, and this is the this is the technical sort of definition for them. If you looked up the definition on our fancy science website or Wikipedia, even um, you would get this: that it's the charge that an atom would have if all of its bonds were totally ionic. Now, most bonds are not totally ionic. Okay. They're at least partially covalent in a lot of cases, but if they were, the oxidation number is what would result. Now, we need them a lot in science. Um, they tell us a lot about where the electrons reside. They have a lot to do with electronegativity, and so they tell us what gets the electrons and what doesn't. So they're pretty important for us, but they're not quite the same as charge, and the things we're going to be dealing with are not always, um, strictly speaking, ionic or covalent compounds. Okay, so let me address something real quick. Um, if you notice in the charge section, I did this really weird thing and I kept writing all the charges with the number first and then the charge, okay? When you see something written like that, technically, okay, that has to do with charge. Um, when you see something written like this with the, with the sign in front of the number, um, technically speaking, that is an oxidation number. Now, most of the time, Okay, we're going to treat these two things as though they're the same thing, so it's not really going to matter that much. Um, but just to be perfectly correct, if you're doing charge, number should be first. If you're doing oxidation number, the sign should be first. Okay, so just sort of keep that in mind as we're rolling through um, the rest of the section. So, there are rules for finding oxidation numbers. There's no way to get around it other than to know the rules. So you should hit pause, copy down the rules, and I'm going to explain each rule as we go through. So do that for each slide as we go through. So, rule number one, all pure elements have an oxidation number of zero. Now, by pure element, I mean it's an element with nothing else in it, okay? It's an element by itself, and it doesn't have a charge on it, okay? Um, if it has a charge, it's not a pure element, it's an ion, and that's something different. So what that means is for each of these cases, my oxidation number is zero, okay? And usually when we write oxidation numbers, we want to write equal. That is not an equal sign on that carbon, but it should be. Okay, so all of these are zero. I tell you what, guys, on, on the test every year, um, there's only a couple oxidation number questions, but every year um, I get someone fooled because one of the first things I ask for the oxidation number for every year is right here, N2. It's a pure element. It's by itself. It's oxidation number zero. No trick to it, but... Every year, someone forgets that and just misses that. So that's rule number one, okay? So not too bad so far. Rule number two, all monatomic ions have an oxidation number equal to their charge. Now, what does that mean? Polyatomic meant many atoms. Monatomic, when we say mono, mono means one. So that means a single element ion. Now, if it's an ion, it has to have a charge, okay? Ion means charge. All right, so it has to have a charge, and if it's a monatomic element, meaning that it's one atom by itself, okay, and or it doesn't actually have to be by itself. It could already be in an ionic compound, so it could be like NaCl, but NaCl breaks down. It's an ionic compound, and it breaks into two ions, Na plus and Cl minus, okay, so those individually are monatomic ions, okay? So oxidation number for monatomic ions, pretty simple, okay? Um, it's whatever their charge is. So sodium's charge is plus one, its oxidation number is plus one. Chlorine's charge is negative one, or one negative, so its oxidation number is negative one. Oxygen is going to be negative two in this case. Um, nitrogen is going to be negative three. And you'll notice again that I'm switching up the sign, putting the sign first, because that's technically the way it should be, okay? So down here, aluminum's plus three, Fluorine is negative one. Okay, monatomic ions, oxidation number is whatever their charge is. All right. 
Now, here's where it starts to get a little tricky. You should really start to have to memorize the rules, or at least when you're doing these initially, you need to make sure that you've got the rules sitting in front of you. Okay, so copy the notes down, make sure you've got them in front of you. So here's the way it works. Um, some atoms have fixed oxidation numbers, meaning that they usually have the same oxidation number. Okay, and I know I can't draw a straight line. So here's the, here's the rules. So you can kind of consider them like A, B, C here. So A, oxygen is pretty much always negative 2. Um, there are exceptions. Okay, and the exception is if it's peroxide. And if you remember the uh, polyatomics from the last podcast, if it's peroxide, it's negative one. But honestly, I'm not going to try to trick you like that, so I wouldn't worry about it. If you see oxygen, it's negative two. And that's great. So that means I come down here to this NO, and I've got to find the oxidation number for both things. So I need oxygen and nitrogen, and I immediately know that oxygen is negative two. Why? That's always what it is. Okay. Um, the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one. Now, there are exceptions to that as well. Um, it could be in something called a metal hydride, in which case um, the metal has whatever its charge is, and then the hydrogen is usually negative one. But almost all the time when you get them, hydrogen is going to be plus one. So if we're trying to find oxidation numbers here, hydrogen plus one. Okay? So that's sort of the B part of C, and then or of rule three. And then C, oxidation number of halogens is usually negative one. Chlorine is a halogen, okay, group 17, so it's going to be negative one. Um, when it says usually, um, if you have more than one, okay, so if more than one, okay, like if I have, um, say, um, let's say um, ClF2 as a compound, then the fluorine, the more electronegative one, gets the negative one. Okay? Not going to try to trick you with that, but just sort of a handy rule to keep in your pocket there. Okay? So, oxidation of number of oxygen, always negative two. Hydrogen, plus one. Halogens, negative one. Okay? So that makes the next part palatable and easy. The sum of all oxidation numbers on a compound is zero. Okay? In a compound. For a polyatomic ion, it's whatever the charge of the ion is. Okay, so here's the deal. You have a compound given to you, in this case, NO. All right? The charge on that NO, if it has a charge, the sum of the oxidation numbers, in other words, if I add up all the oxidation numbers, has to equal whatever the charge is. If there's no charge given, it has to equal zero. Okay? So let's find the oxidation numbers. I need oxygen. I need nitrogen. What did we just say that oxygen always was? Negative two, right? Nitrogen, in this case, we don't know what it is. Not yet. So how do we find it? We do this. We add them up. So they have to equal zero. I have one oxygen. It has a negative two, okay? And nitrogen is what I'm looking for, and I have one of those. And so what I do is I do a little algebra, okay? Nitrogen is the X. So I solve that algebraically, okay? We add two to both sides x equals plus 2, and that means that my nitrogen is plus 2. Okay? Hopefully that didn't trick you too bad. We'll work a couple of these just to make sure that you got it. Now, this is a doozy. Okay? So I've got three things that I need to solve. I've got potassium, I've got manganese, and I've got oxygen. Okay? So here's the good news. Oxygen we know. Negative 2. Okay? We also know that the whole thing has to equal zero. Okay? Now, if I only had one thing left, I could plug in the oxygen and figure that out. But I've got potassium here, right? And manganese. So I've got two things. Now, this is an ionic compound. This is, and this is, in particular, a polyatomic. Okay? So this is going to break up into two ions. It's going to break up into potassium and MnO4 minus, which is permanganate. You're like, Arnold, I don't understand how you know that. This is why you have to know the polyatomics. If I didn't know that that was permanganate, I wouldn't know that this happened. Since I do, here's the good news. Potassium, monatomic ion. So its oxidation number is whatever its charge is, so plus one. So now I jump over here to do my algebra part, okay, and I'm going to start plugging stuff in. So I've, oxygen is negative two, but I have four of them, okay? So I'm going to take this, okay? And I'm going to multiply them. So 4 times negative 2 gives me a negative 8. Okay. I've got one potassium. It has a plus 1 charge. And then I have one manganese, and that's what I'm looking for. So that is X. Okay. 
Let me just clean this up real quick. That means it's going to be 1 plus x minus 8 equals 0. Okay? Rule 4 says it all has to equal 0. So we're going to do the algebra. Okay? Negative 8 plus 1 gives me a negative 7. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And that's going to give me uh, cancels, and I'm going to get x equals plus 7. Okay, in fact, let me grab this real quick, guys, and write the answer over here. So x equals plus 7. Okay, now what was our x? x is manganese, so manganese oxidation number is plus 7. All right, let's work a couple more real quick, and this will let you know that you can have the same two elements, but they can have different oxidation numbers in different compounds. Okay, so I need carbon and I need oxygen. Okay, good news. Always know what oxygen is. Negative two. Bam. Okay. So we plug this in. It all has to equal zero. Oxygen is negative two. I've got one carbon. So I plug in an X there. Okay. Do the algebra there, and that means that carbon is plus two. Okay, when I solve for X, that's going to give me plus two over here. All right, come over to this, the same two elements, carbon and oxygen. Okay, oxygen's still negative 2, um, and it's still all going to equal 0, but the difference is I have two oxygens here, so 2 times a negative 2 gives me negative 4, okay? And I'm still looking for x, which is carbon. When I do the algebra there, x equals plus 4, and so my oxidation number on carbon is plus 4. Now, this stuff's tricky, guys, so go back, watch these again, Make sure you do the practice worksheets yourself. Don't copy this off of someone else. Make absolutely sure um, that you are working these out yourself. Okay? And let me work one more quick one um, before we get out of here. Um, if we've got time, hopefully I don't have to cut this off. Um, so we've got hydrogen, we got sulfur, we got oxygen. Okay? And what do we know? We always know hydrogen, right? Hydrogen's plus one. We always know oxygen. Oxygen is always negative two. Okay, is there a charge here? Nope, so the whole thing has to equal zero. Okay, four times negative two, four times negative two, negative eight. Hydrogen is plus one, and I've got two of them, so that gives me plus two. Why? Two times plus one, okay, plus sulfur in the middle is the X. Okay, so again, I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. Okay, so two plus X minus eight equals zero x minus 6 equals 0, add 6 to both sides, okay, and we get x equals plus 6. What was the x? x is sulfur, sulfur is plus 6, okay? So go over these again, guys. Make sure you work the ones in class. Don't copy off of someone else. Make sure that you understand this. Make sure you rewatch the video if you have to, all right?